How's it going guys, Andreas here and today I'm here with a concept video about Hold'em 2 Manager and how you can improve your poker game. So let's have a look at something I advocate a lot in my streams and that is basically think in win rate for all situations, mainly in big blinds per hundred. You've maybe heard that a lot of players talk about their win rate and you know how many BB per hundred they make in general. But what I'm talking about right now is that you should think in win rate in every single situation. Let's have a look at what I do mean by this. Here's a hand I recently played. Um, and I have the 6-5 suited. I open raise and I get called by the blinds and I'm giving up against two players basically. And that makes a lot of sense. They both have me out flop. And that means now that I'm folding, I'm actually losing not 225 chips, but 225 big blinds per hundred. That's my win rate in this spot when I'm opening and then losing the hand, basically. So winning blinds and entities in an entity is about 250 big blinds per hundred or 202.5 BB. So if in this hand, you know, I would have taken down the blinds and anties, it's 50 plus 100 and 150. That uh, you know, is even a little bit more as the antis are somewhat high in this tournament. So it would have been 300 big blind per hundred. So it would have, you know, been a super great result basically. When they do defend, sometimes it can be more, sometimes, you know, it is going to be less. Okay, let's have a look at some other spots. Folding your big blind is always 100 BB, minus 100 BB per hundred, meaning you're losing your entire big blind. And if you repeat that 100 times, which means per hundred, right? then you're losing 100 big blinds. So it's minus 100 big blinds per 100, okay? Um, you can see that's just an, a little bit an arbitrary way of, you know, basically writing this, but it makes a lot of sense as you can see later on. Folding your small blind is minus 50 BB per 100 and raising as I said from the cutoff and folding to a re-raise or losing the hand in general is minus 225 BB per 100. That's only 2.25X from the cutoff. All spots together build your win rate, which might be, you know, like in my instance from this year, 2017 in MTTs, eight big plans per hundred. And you have to determine which hand, which, you know, which spots are really relevant to pick out and work on them specifically. Let's have a look at some spots that I think are relevant. High frequency spots that are, for example, when you steal on the button, when everyone folds to you, you're on the button and you can basically steal the blinds. That's a high frequency spot and it's a very relevant situation and it determines a lot about your win rate. Big blind versus button defend is also very relevant because it's going to happen often. Same for small blind versus button. Those blind dynamics, they are really important and they're going to determine a lot, a huge chunk of your win rate, basically. Uh, folding versus a three bet, minus 225 big blinds per hundred, as mentioned before, or calling a three bet is also, you know, a very important situation because it's often going to be close with some of your hands and you have to determine whether you want to, you know, make it a fold or whether your opponent priced you out with his strong range and his three bet. So how do you do that in Holder Manager? Let's have a look at it. Um, here you can see my entire year. Um, didn't play that many MTDs this year. You can see 122,000 hands. That's uh, only no limit to hold them. There will be some more in PLO and Pelt limit on my high low and no limit on my high low. But this is just no limit hold'em. You see that I'm at eight big ones per hundred. It's currently a little bit rising, you know, after, you know, I studied a little bit more entities and I would say it's a lot of nine big ones per hundred, but it doesn't matter as much. But if you want to improve on it, what you should do is not look at the whole 122K hands, but look at spots that are coming up very often. The way I do this, and you can basically model it really easily is, you have to create filters here in Hold'em to Manager to put over these 120k hands, and then that way you can, um, you know, find out how you're doing in different spots. So what do we did we say here again? Button steal. I have a filter for almost everything. Um, I also use this for my students. To basically, have a look at their databases and you know, basically trying to improve their game and you know, looking where their leaks are. So. Uh, when you look at button first in, this is this filter here, button first in that I'm using, and I'm looking at my button first in in MTTs, it's going to be loading in a second. You can see that the EV BB per 100 is about 42.88. So that means I'm winning more or less like 43% of one big blind when I do open the button first in. 
even more importantly, what you can do is you can basically, um, what I do is I look at filters and I look at, uh, you know, basically um, the hands that I'm not opening most of the time, you know, the weaker hands here, king at offsuit can be open, you know, 10, five suit and all that stuff. So, but I have made this range called button inverted. And um, this is basically what I'm usually not opening the trash hands. And you can see that I raise them about 8% of the time. And you can see that when I do raise them, I actually lose less. I forgot about to mention that, but an anti costs you usually 13 BB per hundred. So meaning that when I lose 10.89, I actually lose less than an anti. That means that I'm actually a profitable player when I'm on the button with these hands, meaning I pick the spots more or less wisely when I do decide to open raise those spots. You can also, you know, specify a little bit more, play around a little bit here and say, okay, um, we're gonna look at a steel filter um, and I call this marginal 13%. Um, it's gonna be the weaker part of my button range and I look at it in MTTs and you know I have to see that it's actually profitable and not negative EV. Also the sample matters, but as you can see here, I'm winning just 6.7 BB per 100, but it's 20 BB per 100 better, I hope I didn't lose here, but better than um, you know folding. Basically, so if I folded those hands all the time, I would actually be winning less. And as you can see, it's fairly decent, you know, button opens, uh, some king x suited in there, some, um, you know, king it off, king nine off, etc. So when I do have these hands, I shouldn't, especially when deep stack always fold them, I should open them most of the time, um, unless I'm in an ICM situation or something. But I'm actually losing on the long run less when I do open these hands. Okay, this is not the only spot. You should look at, for example, big blind versus button defend, which I do have filters for as well. So what I do here, I get rid of these filters here. And you know, as I have these saved, I just click on add filters. Otherwise you have to create those filters. Um, but you can, for example, look at positional filters and then you can see that, for example, big blind versus button steel, which is this one. Like how am I doing when I face a guy who hasn't opened yet on the button and I'm in a big blind, how much am I losing? Like I should lose much less than 100 BB per 100 by folding, right? And the answer is I am losing overall, when this is correct, uh, minus 11 BB per 100. Uh, remember that this number is so low, not in a cash game, this number will be much higher because there's still antis in place. So the cake, so-called, you know, if you if you look at the look at the hand, hopefully this is not gonna be an awful one, but here I got the king nine offsuit against the button raise. We're gonna call, let's put this away. So the thing is, I'm not only playing for his chips and my chips here, but I'm also playing for the antis and the small blind. So I have like more to gain than just my own chips and my opponent's chips. So the cake here is going to be 1850. That's almost, you know, going to be uh, about five and a half big blinds. So 550 BB 100. And we're going to share this now on the flop, depending on how we play, you know. And usually I'm going to get less of the cake because I didn't three bet before the flop. Okay, so this goes check a bet I call. Um, and then it goes check. Um, he bets and I defend obviously on the king turn and if he bets the river again, I would have called as well, obviously. But yeah, so I got lucky in this hand. But the point is that here I get a piece of cake and when you look at the overall situation, you want to have this number at low, as low as possible. And I'm pretty sure some people actually have even positive win rates here, meaning they are even not losing money at all when this happens because of the antis, because of the part of the pot they can share. The problem with this situation is actually that also the folds are included here, I believe. So when I do fold, uh, which I shouldn't have in this situation, I guess, why did I fold here? That was a mistake. Yep, I should have called. So uh, yeah, I should have, you know, some some of these strong hands shouldn't be in here. I should defend them almost always unless they like 3x, 4x, I do something really weird. Um, I can get behind a 4-3 offsuit fold here, I guess, most of the time. Yeah, I mean, you can still defend because you get such great odds, but I'm usually going to go and fold. So when this does happen, I lose 100 big blinds or one big blind here, 1.1, and this plus my big blind, and I'm gonna lose 110 big blinds per 100 on the long run. 
So, um, what does happen, however, if I am not folding once I call my big blind, which is going to be uh, big blind versus button did call. So when I did call here, this number will go up drastically because all the folds are ruled out. They're not going to be in this filter anymore. It's only 600 spots. Um, not that many over 120k, I guess, but still a bunch, you know. Um, so when I did decide to call, I only won 5 VB per 100, which is a little bit, you know, I could probably win more here. As I said, I didn't 3 bet. But you know you have a look have to have a look at these situations when those numbers are much different for you are much lower that wouldn't be um, a good thing. Let's have a look at the, at the you know last spot when the button does open and that is going to be when we do three bet. Um, big plan versus button did three bet. That's going to be a very positive number. Um, and it's going to be 460 BB per 100. Uh, here, obviously, it did have 3 bets 100% because this is all the 150 cases that I did 3 bet um, this year. It's not that many, actually. I should have like a somewhat high 3 bet uh, blind. It's going to be better in the small one versus button, but I think I, I under bluff slightly in big one versus button, or at least I have this year. But when I did 3 bet, I actually won way too much. I won about 4.5 big blinds or 460 BB per 100, uh, meaning that my opponents folded most of the time. Let's have a look at uh, Ace 9 offsuit here. Okay, here I basically, yeah, you can see this is going to be just a reshuffle spot. These are obviously also in there. So there's 600, 1200, there's like 2700 out there. That's more than 4 big blinds, and I just re raise all in. And basically, with this play, whether it is you know early stage or late stage, you win 450 BB per hundred, and it's going to be a very good, you know, outcome. Um, <clears throat> all right, what else? We have small one versus button resteal, which I can quickly show you as well. And I'm gonna then not make the video that much longer, but talk a little bit about other spots. Um, so you get rid of this again. And by doing all these things, you know, can really look at your game also and see, okay, where do you actually play well? Where do you, and, you know, compare that with other players that you might know and uh, have a look at your database. Um, but this database analysis will make you much better, in my opinion. Small blend versus button steel. Um, in overall, when this happened, I was in the small blind. Remember, if I fold the small blind, I lose 50 BB per 100 plus 13 BB per 100 for anti, so about 63 BB per 100. So when I was in the small blind and the button opened, I only lost minus 11 BB per 100 overall on average. Uh, you can see that my 3 bet frequency is quite high with 16%. So I did attack my you know, opponents from the small blind when they opened the button a lot of the times. And uh, this paid off a lot as they um, folded a bunch, I, I would say. Um, also a situation here. Um, we are in the small blind. We face the button open three bet with the queen jack suited. Um, we're actually committing ourselves against this guy, which is not so cool, but you know, that's just poker. Um, he calls. And here we see bet and take it down. Um, here I win even more because he defended. But in general, you know, picking it, you know, picking it up before the flop is a very good outcome, or then on the flop with a C bet sometimes. So you want to look at your database and not only these spots, but basically folding to a three bet or calling three bets. You can also leave that. And, you know, I have created basically all the filters. Took me a while to do this, but I paid off a lot because, you know, I can look at the so many different situations in poker and I try to f filter out the most relevant ones, the ones that create a lot of win rate in the at the end of the day and, you know, try to have a look at those. Um, you can also filter by, you know, uh, action if it's a three bet pot or a single race pot. For example, here I have uh, early position, middle position, cutoff, and button. Um, and when I have a heads up pot, which is really interesting, I can show you that real quick as well. Um, try to make timestamps as well, but give me a second here to open this. Um, so when we are unopened and we have a heads up pot in position, which is really nice. We're going to see how that is in win rate. That should be quite positive. 
And you can see that I'm winning one and a half big ones, so 157 BB per hundred. And that means, I mean, I'm basically winning a lot of money when I do open raise, the big blind calls, or the small blind calls, or both calls, it doesn't really matter. But no, the players on the flop is too, sorry. Either small blind calls or big one calls. So when I have a heads up pot, I'm gonna win a lot of the times and a lot of money uh, with 160 BB per 100 winner. So this situation coming up really frequently here, basically uh, every, you know, two and a half percent of hands, like every 40th time, you're gonna have a heads up pot in position. So you wanna look at this situation a lot and how are you doing here? Are you really winning a lot or are you like, you know, winning meh, a little bit? You want to really look at your database and by the way this is also you can filter so many more things with hold'em tool manager so i think this program is a must have you can filter by stakes you can filter by um which is here you can filter by you know different textures i have pair boards unpair boards, monotone boards i do that also for plo sometimes to have a look on which boards i'm actually doing well and which i'm, I'm not um Yes, stack sizes, you know, I found out recently that I'm doing not so great in cash games up to 100 big blinds, but when you go get deep stacks and rake is less of a factor, I do much better. Uh, you can look at your range, you can look, okay, what is my, how much is my button range doing, how is my cutoff range doing, you can all, you know, basic save down and create it here with those basic and whole card filters, you can build your ranges, etc. And you can learn a lot about your game and try to analyze it. I will take a lot of time, guys, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really what I think is one of the best methods to get, you do it like, you know, once in a half year, you do it really extensively and look at how you've improved, how your win rates are. And I do it with all of my students because I think I get a very quick overview on where they basically play well and where they play poorly and where they are leaking a lot of money. And you know, uh, when you see those negative win rates in, or like not so positive win rates in spots where I should be winning, this is going to be, you know, very valuable for you guys. So um, as usual, um, I'm gonna mention a couple of other things. I do have a Discord channel over here. If you go to my Twitch chat, exclamation mark Discord in the chat, then you can find this Discord channel. I'm also putting it in the description below um, so that you can join Discord. Here I have a couple of things and uh, you know, posting a couple of sessions, etc. If you wanna talk about handers, this is the channel. If you wanna get rid of bad beats, you can do that here. Um, I'm announcing when I'm online on Twitch, I'm announcing when I have deep runs and there's a you know general voice chat as well sometimes. I'm also gonna have a, you know, basically a sub stream or, you know, basically giveaway for all my subscribers on my Twitch channel. So if you head over there and are a subscriber, you can get my poker book, which is called Fundamentals of Poker Success. And you can see, you know, basically most of my thoughts up to now, it's not everything in there, but um, basically all that I think is relevant poker. So if you do subscribe to my Twitch channel, to all my subscribers, I'm going to give this book away for free um, as a bonus and as a thanks for the support. And you can see a lot about, you know, basically, you know, tools that I'm using, PO Solver and my explanation and what you can do with it. Even I mentioned Moncresolve, which is a, you know, very new um, pot limit OMA software on the market and how I use it and what it does. And then, you know, basically I talk about other topics that I think are relevant in the poker industry. And, you know, I think when you read the book and follow a lot of the advice, you know, it makes you um, improve on your poker game in a lot of different areas and not just the strategic part, but also gives a lot of advice on how to go there. So this is all I want to mention. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment in the section below. If you have any comments about this video, that would be really helpful. What you would like to do in the future or what would you like to see on this YouTube channel? I think, you know, by doing this, by having this video here, I hope I can provide a lot of value to my viewers and, you know, let me know what you think about it. If you have more questions and if, you, if this was understandable and made a lot of sense, hopefully. So thanks for watching and see you next time.